Meet my Mini Mac Pro. As I discussed in the last video, part one, I'll leave a link in the upper right corner, the new Mac Pro is a workstation and intended for enterprise users who can afford it. However, I still wanted a desktop Mac that is expandable. So I looked to Apple's only other non-all-in-one computer, the Mac Mini. The Mac Mini was refreshed in the fall of 2018 and is the brains of this system. It is connected to the Akedia Node Duo, which is the chassis that will enable expansion. Now this Node Duo together with the Mac Mini creates a very small form factor that comfortably sits on any desktop. And the space gray of the Mac Mini matches well with the color of the Akedia chassis, which has a design that harkens back to the previous Mac Pro tower. I will admit, this is a bit of a stretch to create a Mac mini base system that can compete with an entry-level Mac Pro workstation, but what other choice do you have from Apple? The challenge is how close in performance can you get to the base $6,000 Mac Pro, and can you do it for a fraction of the cost? The specifications needed for a video editing system can be gleaned from what is offered in the base iMac Pro and the base Mac Pro systems offered today. My target specification is Core i7 CPU, 32 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte SSD, and a Radeon 580 GPU. Now the most powerful CPU you can order in the Mac Mini today is the Core i7, However, it only comes with six cores and falls two cores short of the base level iMac Pro and Mac Pro. It does have the advantage of higher boost clock speeds up to 4.6 GHz. The Mac Mini CPU also has an integrated GPU which contains Intel's QuickSync feature for hardware encoding for H.264 videos, something lacking in all of Intel's Xeon processors in the iMac Pro and Mac Pro lines. So how do you create an upgradable mini Mac Pro? It starts with a dual slot expansion chassis in the Akedia No Dual. This Thunderbolt 3 base expansion box is different from others in that it has two PCIe slots. The two PCIe slots will enable the use of a GPU and an SSD all housed in this nice elegant small form factor. Together, this gives you a system where you can upgrade three out of the four major components. To upgrade the CPU, you will need to purchase a new Mac Mini. This, if I'm honest with myself, was an impulse buy and I purchased it for its nice design without understanding all of the specs. Technically, this is not an eGPU. It has a few limitations. First, Due to its small size, the GPU length is limited to 220 millimeters, so no full-size graphics cards. Two, it contains no internal power supply. That's right, the power to this unit comes from an external power brick similar to what you would find with your laptop. This limits the power that can be delivered to the graphics card to just 75 watts. Third, even though it has two Thunderbolt 3 ports, only one is connected to the PCIe slots and as a result, the bandwidth is shared. This means that the times four PCIe speeds are cut to times two PCIe speeds for each PCIe slot. This results in communications to your GPU being reduced to about Thunderbolt 2 type speeds. But that does not mean half the performance as we'll see later. For the GPU, I have the Radeon RX 560 with four gigabytes of VRAM from MSI. The MSI Aero is an ITX size GPU and is only 155 millimeters in length. This will be an interim solution and a stepping stone to higher performance GPUs. I chose this for now for a few reasons. One, this unit fits. Two, its power consumption is low enough. And three, it's what I had available. The second PCIe slot will be used for a one terabyte SSD, and I chose a crucial P1 M.2 NVMe SSD. To use the SSD requires the use of an inexpensive M.2 to PCIe adapter card. The one used here is the Silverstone ECM24. You could also choose the ECM21 that comes without a heatsink.
The memory upgrade for the Mac Mini requires a disassembly, and there are many, many tutorials out there. However, my favorite guide is from iFixit, and I'll leave a link in the description below. Let's build this thing. I just love how this system looks and how compact it is sitting on the desk. The Akidio No Duo comes with a 2 meter long active Thunderbolt 3 cable, which is nice if you want to hide the system under your desk. However, I just used a half meter cable that I had lying around to remove the clutter and clean up the overall look. Now my Mac Mini came with the latest version of Mojave installed. 
It must have been sitting on the shelf for a while, hence the sale price. I have not upgraded to Catalina, since Catalina has been buggy and has had issues with RX 500 series GPUs. Thank you, Bruce. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to learn more. So I will wait until Apple resolves the issues. One thing I've learned, do not rush to upgrade to the latest Mac OS version until you know it's okay. So how well does it perform? Well, here are the benchmarks. Those are a lot of numbers. However, if we just want to compare my Mini Mac Pro to the Mac Pro, we can just calculate a relative percentage between the two. When at 100%, they are equal in performance. When greater than 100%, the Mini wins. When less than 100%, the Mac Pro wins. Let's study the individual groups. For single core performance, the Mini is about 14 to 17% better than the Mac Pro thanks to its higher turbo boost clock speeds. For multi-core performance, you can see that the Mini is between 70 to 80% of the Mac Pro, which, considering the Mini has three-fourths of the cores, it stands to reason. For GPU performance, my Mini Mac Pro falls short as it is between 44 to 57%, or about half of the Mac Pro level. This, again, is due to the limited power available Supplemental power will be required for higher power GPUs. That aside, the Mini Mac Pro greatly improves upon the integrated GPU in the Mac Mini and is three to five times more powerful. When running under heavy load, the Mini does run hot. During Cinebench R20, the Mini was consistently somewhere between 95 to 100 degrees C. After several runs, the Mini posted a score of 2771. Knowing that a typical desktop i7-8700 would run closer to 3400, I experimented and through various trials was able to walk up that score to over 3000, which comes closer to the score of the Mac Pro at 3600. To keep this video from becoming way too long, I'll cover those details in a future video. I also included performance of an i5 and an i3 Mac Mini so that you can see the difference and also understand what level of performance you can get for your money should you find a good deal on one of those models and are maybe looking more entry level. Video editing with this system is good, although I didn't have enough time to really benchmark and I will also cover that in a future video with other graphics cards hooked up to this eGPU. What did the system cost? Well, I took more than a month purchasing the parts as I was looking for sales daily to keep the price down. The breakdown is as follows. The Mac Mini i7 cost $950. The 32 gigabytes of RAM was $110. The Akedia No Duo was $250 through a special with Amazon. The RX 560 with four gigabytes of RAM, I purchased that second hand for $65. The Crucial P1 one terabyte SSD was $99. And then the M.2 to PCIe adapter card was about $20. That left the overall cost for the Mini Mac Pro at about $1,500. If I were to price out a 4K iMac with these specs, that system would cost $2,800. 
for that kind of money, you're better off purchasing a 5K iMac and then upgrade the RAM yourself for another 110 for a total of just over $2,700. I guess that's how Apple gets you. They never really give you what you want and it's a slippery slope on the upgrades. And before you know it, the system costs over $2,500. That's why keeping the Mini Mac Pro to $1,500 was such a focus. It takes a little bit of patience, but it can be done. Conclusion time. What do I think of the system overall? It works very well for editing 4K videos. It's super stable, runs great, and will be eligible for Mac OS upgrades for years to come. I have not had any issues with the Akita No Duo, and this system is upgradable. I can change out the RAM to 64 gigabytes. I can upgrade the SSD to two terabytes. I can upgrade the GPU to a Navi-based RX 5000 series graphics card. And if Apple chooses to update the Mac Mini with an eight core CPU, then I can sell my current one and get the upgraded Mini. It's flexible to meet my needs and my budget in the future, just like a Mini Mac Pro should. And I personally love the overall look. For now, the RX 560 works well enough since it's been optimized for the last couple of years in Final Cut Pro, and I haven't felt limitations due to the Times 2 eGPU bus speeds. However, I've only had it for just over a week and really haven't had a chance to test it thoroughly. Fundamentally, this is a good laptop GPU, so I'm not done yet since my performance target was the Radeon Pro 580X. I have a few video cards in mind, however, they require additional power, so that's something I'll be working on. In a future video, I will also be comparing the Times 2 bus performance with the Times 4 bus performance of traditional eGPUs for a variety of graphics cards. Overall, I am pleased with this system and it currently meets my needs. You really can't get a new system with better performance for your dollar than this from Apple. If you found this video informative, hit the like button. Share this video with friends you know who are into Macs. Consider subscribing so that you don't miss the next video. Let me know in the comments below. Is this Mini Mac Pro something you would consider for your upgradable desktop Mac? For part three, we will be going old school with an older Mac Pro to see what is possible in 2020 and how does it compare to my Mini Mac Pro. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.